With it said that there could be another round of releases in WWE and more, this is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on and don't forget to like the video. Recalling how he wanted to get into MMA and be a part of the UFC, Baron Corbin told Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful, I know that in the early stages of Ultimate Fighter, I was looking at going and being on the one with Rashad Evans and all those guys. But I had a football scholarship and I was going to college, so I couldn't do that. When I was done playing football, I was asked at a table, I was sitting there with a guy who was a manager of a rock and roll band. He's like, what do you want to do if you're done playing football? I was like, man, I think I am done. My passion is not there for it. He's like, do you want to do UFC? I said, I either want to do UFC or WWE, so I've always been a massive WWE fan. He's like, I have a connection with WWE. It's Neil the Music Guy. Let me put a call into him. Go see if you'd like it. Because that was the thing. It was like, I'm either going to try to fight in the Octagon or I'm going to go to WWE. And I had the opportunity for WWE first. And then that's where they're at. I still get that itch though. I still am like, man, should I go try to do like a new Naga Jiu Jitsu tournament? Should I try to fight in the Golden Gloves again? Or should I try to fight? Jake Paul. It's one of those things. Taking a shot at The Rock when asked about his return to WWE, Grayson Waller said on Cheap Pete, I don't know if The Rock is ready for the Waller effect. He's been away for a while. I'm already helping out John Cena. I've got a lot that I'm carrying. My back is sore from carrying these legends. Rock is a big boy. That's a lot to carry. I was backstage. I went to get my chapstick from the car. I go to my car, come back, and all of a sudden people were like, did you know The Rock was here? What are you talking about? The Rock wasn't here. Turns out he was. I ran through the venue. I checked every door, every room. That brother, as soon as he found out that I was coming back, he got on his tour bus. Him and Pat McAfee went back to hang with Deion Sanders. Rock didn't want to bar with Grayson. Let's be real. I think Theory put it on him. That was the best Theory has performed on the microphone. At the moment, it's the cool thing to say bad things about Austin Theory. He's good looking, he's young, talented, has had so many more opportunities. If your mom or sister saw him in person, they're going home with him. I'd be jealous too. He put it on The Rock. Watching it back later, I was very impressed with what Theory did. The Rock is the goat on the mic. On the mic, careful John, for a reason. Even now, he's been away for so long. The control he has over that audience is different. I can appreciate that. He's on a different level. More than anything, I always look at the Waller effect. Obviously, it's an entertainment product. I like having the show and saying mean things to people, but I see it as a test to myself. I like to test myself against the best. That's how I get better. Having someone like Cody Rhodes, who is very good on the microphone, John Cena, this is me testing myself and I want to see where I'm at. I think The Rock is the best, so that would be a great test for Grayson Waller. I feel 100% I can compete and maybe even roll over him, which might, which not many people can say they can do. Mentioning the tragic passing of Rick Rude and the circumstances surrounding it, Honky Tonk Man told Hannibal TV, he injected Viagra into his dick because he thought he could get an instant hard on and F a lot of broads. But instead he got an infection and his nuts enlarged to the size of cantaloupes, so they had to cut everything away from it. Then he went home and killed himself. What a way to go. Speaking about the possibility of getting physically involved in angles for AEW, commentator for the company Jim Ross said on his Grilling JR podcast, I've been lucky to avoid any ball shots. Tony Khan, I don't know if he just doesn't believe in it or what. We've never discussed it because I'm not interested in getting involved in physicality and angles again. I'm past that. I'm not past that egocentrically. I'm past that age-wise and all that stuff. I've done my time. If you want to kick someone in the balls, go with Kevin Kelly or Nigel. Talking about how the fight between CM Punk and Jack Perry overshadowed the success of AEW's All in London event, Chris Jericho said on Busted Open Radio, it's wrestling though, man, you know, it's only rock and roll. People like to focus on the negative. I remember when I got into a fight with Goldberg in Milwaukee, it was out on whatever version of the internet was then 10 minutes faster. Out of those 81,000 people, how many people know whatever happened or ever really care? The hardcore fans and the journalists and the guys who do this care and we should, but there's also fans, not just 81,000 thousand but how about being number one on cable once again four weeks in a row
Explaining why he will not be making independent pro wrestling appearances in the immediate future, Eddie Kingston wrote on Instagram, Due to being NJPW strong, open weight, and an ROH champion, I have to come to the hard decision that I will have to stop doing independence. Dealing with a lower back injury right now that I need to get fixed and will, so I can be ready for all NJPW strong shows and all three AEW shows. When my responsibilities as NJPW and ROH champion is over, I will hopefully be able to do independence again. I apologize to all, but I just need to focus and my body needs to be ready for those shows. Recalling his issues with Ric Flair, Teddy Hart said this to Wrestling Shoot Interviews. I was having problems with Ric Flair, and I guess Gary Hart probably knew what was going on, so he came to me one time and told me he made me this blade. And he said if Flair kept bothering me, he told me to take that blade and cut his throat. My hand to God, I have no reason to lie. Bringing up his previous plan to return to WWE, Jake Hager told KNS WrestleFest, When I left WWE, my plan was to go to MMA, get really good, be undefeated, and then go back to WWE and wrestle Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. A little slight turn. A lot of that happened. We were close. I'd kick Roman's butt. He knows it. I know it. If you want to tell him that, tell him that. For a status update on former WWE star Matt Riddle, Ringside News said Matt Riddle had not been seen on WWE television for the past couple of weeks while his sexual assault case dominated headlines throughout the week. He was recently spotted training at an MMA dojo with Shayna Baszler while he remained absent. As previously reported, Matt Riddle officially announced that he was released by WWE. This came as a shock to many as they felt Riddle would never be fired. Many showed support for Riddle after his firing as well. Controversial Ring of Honor founder Rob Feinstein took to his Facebook page and revealed that he reached out to Matt Riddle for some dates following his release. For those who are not aware, Feinstein allegedly tried to solicit sex on the internet from a person that he thought to be an underage boy but was an adult. This was part of a sting operation conducted by perverted justice. Feinstein later issued a statement where he denied the incident. Feinstein then claimed that the entire thing was orchestrated so that Carrie Silken could take control of Ring of Honor. In the end, Feinstein left the promotion. WWE higher-ups also stated that Matt Riddle burned too many chances with WWE. Only time will tell whether Riddle will find a new home elsewhere, as his problematic nature might make him undesirable for other promotions. Staying on the topic of Matt Riddle, his ex-girlfriend rejoiced over his firing from WWE as Riddle's fiance responded to her. Now Riddle's ex has said this on social media, Misha Montana, stop calling victims liars. You are a disgrace for females, you are a disgusting human in my opinion, and a Home Depot, Walmart, etc. are jobs that people work every day to support their families. Porn and wrestling is not the only work out there, so buck up, buttercup. Misha Montana, no one feels sorry for a man who was his own demise, take out any allegations, and you still have a man sent to rehab multiple times and you still have a man posting a police officer falsely accusing him of sexual assault while being intoxicated in public. His life, in my opinion, went spiraling out of control when he met you, Misha. But that's just my opinion. Taking to social media, Soraya revealed that her belongings were missing, writing, heads up to the public, all my wrestling gear has recently gone missing, including some items that I owned for 10 years and had sentimental value. Jackets, my return gear, Wembley gear, Outcast gear, the whole lot. Luckily, I have two jackets left, but I would love for you guys to keep an eye out on the internet and auction sites because someone may wind up selling stuff eventually. If you hear anything, please contact hello at alleliteWrestling.com with a subject line of Soraya gear, AEW tickets and an autograph to anyone that leads to the recovery of these items. Thank you. A Facebook marketplace listing that has since been removed seemingly showed off Soraya's belongings, with the ad reading, who is ready for a once-in-a-lifetime sale? Do you or someone you know love wrestling? Then you do not want to miss this sale. A large variety of wrestling memorabilia from NXT and WWE from the one and only Paige slash Soraya Jade Bevis. She is the inaugural NXT Women's Champion, the youngest ever two-time WWE Women's 
Champion, and now the AEW Women's Champion. Also, The Rock made a movie of her life, All in the Family, signed photographs, wrestling cards, custom one-of-a-kind leather outfit, items from and worn in Total Diva Show 2, WrestleMania photos, and so much more. We purchased her abandoned storage unit, yes, you read that right, September 23rd at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Three ring gear outfits were sold on Pawn Stars to America and will air early next year. Noting what is to come in regards to the recent releases from WWE Ringside News wrote BWE posted behind their X account that some of the recently released WWE superstars, or the ones they have yet to release, may come back eventually. After all, the door never really closes in WWE if there is money to be made. Don't rule out returns for some of the releases or upcoming releases. It is also interesting to note that the bona fide WWE insider also made reference to upcoming releases. That being said, WWE we may not be finished cutting the roster. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all later.